Hi, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 3.8, Add Decimals. The essential question for this lesson is, how can place value help you add decimals? Now, go ahead and open up in your GoMath workbooks to lesson 3.8, found on page 67, and let's get started. Now, before we begin solving problems in this lesson, I want to talk to you about some steps that we're going to follow as we are adding decimals. Now, the model question given here is that we're going to add 12 and 78 hundredths and 31 and 14 hundredths. Now, the first step we're going to take is we're going to estimate the sum. Now, when you estimate, you're going to round each add end, and it would be 12 and 78 hundredths and 31 and 14 hundredths. You're going to round each of those add ends to the nearest whole number and then add to estimate the sum. So what we know is 12 and 78 hundredths is about 13. 31 and 14 hundredths is about 31. So now that I've rounded those to the nearest whole numbers, I'm now going to add those two numbers together. And what I know is 13 plus 31 is going to take me to 44. So my estimated answer is about 44. So what I know is my exact answer when I actually find the sum should be close to my estimated answer of 44. Now let's take a look at step number two. Step two says to write the problem with the decimal points aligned. So what that means is when I look at how my problem is written here, I notice that my decimal points are lined up. So your decimal points have to be aligned. That way you know you're adding the right place values together. Now it says we're going to work on adding. And in this case, we're going to add the hundredths first, then we're going to add the tenths, the ones, and the tens, and we're going to regroup as needed. So what you see is you see now 12 and 78 hundredths being added to 31 and 14 hundredths. Well, these are the steps that have been taken. 8 plus 4 has been added together, and 8 plus 4 is 12, so you write the 2 down and regroup the 1. 7 plus 1 is going to give you 8, plus that regrouped 1 is going to take you to 9, so we write the 9 down. Now, once again, our decimal points are aligned. They follow in a line. Now we're going to add the 2 and the 1 together, and that gives us 3. The last step is to add the 1 plus 3, which is going to give us 4. So our answer, our sum, turns out to be 43 and 92 hundredths. And what I know is 43 and 92 hundredths is close to our estimated answer of about 44. Now, let's try putting those steps together as we are adding decimals in this lesson. Now, let's take a look at question number two. Our job is to estimate and then find the sum. And I know that when I estimate, my job is going to be to round to the nearest whole number and then add those numbers together. Well, for number two, they give us four and twenty-three hundredths plus six and fifty-one hundredths. So I'm going to start out by looking at the first add-end, which is 4 and 23 hundredths. If I'm going to round to the nearest whole number, which is the 4, I know that I have to look at the number to the right of that 4, which is a 2. I know that a 2 tells me that I'm going to keep that 4 the same. So what I know is 4 and 23 hundredths rounds to the whole number 4. Now, let's take a look at the second add-end. We have 6 and 51 hundredths. Well, my 6 is the whole number that I'm going to be rounding, so I'm going to look to the right at my 5. And I know that if my number is 5 or greater, that means I have to add 1 to my 6. So I know that 6 and 51 hundredths is going to round to the whole number 7. Now my next step is to add those two numbers together. And when I add 4 plus 7, that's going to give me 11. So my estimated answer turns out to be 11. Now, my exact sum should be close to this estimated answer of 11. So let's take a look at this question again. Once again, we're going to add 4 and 23 hundredths plus 6 and 51 hundredths. Now, my first step is going to be this. I'm going to go ahead and place my decimal point first to help keep the correct alignment because remember, when you're adding decimal or when you're adding decimal numbers, your decimal points should be aligned. So I'm going to go ahead and write my decimal point down and keep it aligned, and then I'm going to work on adding those two decimal numbers together. 
And I'm going to start out first by adding the numbers in the hundreds place. Well, I know that 3 plus 1 is going to give me 4, so I'm going to write down a 4. Next, I'm going to focus on adding the numbers in the tenths place. Well, I know that 2 plus 5 is going to give me 7, so I'm going to write a 7 down. Now we're going to take a look at adding those 1's together. So I'm going to add 4 plus 6, and I know that 4 plus 6 is going to give me 10. So when I add 4 and 23 hundredths plus 6 and 51 hundredths, my answer, my sum, turns out to be 10 and 74 hundredths. And what I know is that sum is close to my estimated answer of 11. Now, let's take a look at question number four. Our job, once again, is to estimate and then find the sum. Well, I know that when I'm estimating, what I'm going to do is I'm going to round each of my add-ins to the nearest whole number and then add those numbers together. So I'm going to start out, first of all, by looking at my 2 and 7 tenths, that first add-in. I have a 2 in the 1's place, so I look to the number that is to the right of my 2, and that number is a 7. Well, I know that a 7 tells me to round up, so I'm going to add 1 to my 2. So what that means is 2 and 7 tenths is going to round to the whole number 3. Now, let's take a look at our second add-in. We have 5 and 37 hundredths. My 5 is in the 1's place, so I'm going to look to the right of my 5, and in that place I see a 3. Well, I know that 3 is less than 5, so that means my number in the 1's place has to stay the same. So I know that 5 and 37 hundredths is going to round to the whole number 5. Now my next step is to add those two numbers together, and I know that 3 plus 5 is going to give me 8. So my estimated answer turns out to be 8. Now our next step is to find the sum. Now when I look at my two add-ins, I notice a couple of things. First of all, 2 and 7 tenths only has a number in the tenths place. 5 and 37 hundredths has a number in the hundredths place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make what's called an equivalent decimal. So I'm going to add a zero behind my 7 in that first add-in so it also has a digit in the hundredths place. Now, before I begin adding those two add-ins together, once again, I'm going to make sure that my decimal points are aligned. So I see my decimal points here and here, and I'm going to go ahead and write my decimal point down in my sum right here. So I'm making sure that my decimal points are aligned. Next, I'm going to start by adding the numbers in the hundredths place. So I'm going to add 0 plus 7, and I know that 0 plus 7 is going to give me 7. So I'm going to write down a 7 in the hundredths place. Next, I'm going to add the numbers in the tenths place. So I have a 7 plus a 3. Well, I know that 7 plus 3 is going to give me 10, so I'm going to write the 0 down, and I'm going to regroup the 1. Next, I'm going to add the numbers in the ones place. I know that 2 plus 5 is going to give me 7, plus that regrouped 1 is going to take me to 8. So I'm going to write down an 8 in the ones place. So what I know is, when I add 2 and 7 tenths, or the equivalent decimal 2 and 70 hundredths, plus 5 and 37 hundredths, I'm going to get 8 and 7 hundredths. And what I also know is, 8 and 7 hundredths is close to my estimated answer of 8. Now, let's take a look at question number 6. We're going to estimate and then find the sum. So for question 6, they give us 6 and 87 hundredths, plus 5 and 18 hundredths. Well, I'm going to first of all round each of those add-ins to the nearest whole number and then add to estimate the sum. So when I look at 6 and 87 hundredths, I know my 6 is in the 1's place, so I look at the number to the right, and that number is an 8. Well, an 8 tells me to round up, which means I have to add 1 to my 6. So when I round 6 and 87 hundredths, that turns into the whole number 7. Now, let's take a look at the second add-in, which is 5 and 18 hundredths. My 5 is in the 1's place, and the number to the right of my 5 is a 1. Well, 1 is less than 5, so that means I'm going to keep this number the same, so I know that 5 and 18 hundredths is going to round to the whole number 5. Now, when I add 7 plus 5, that's going to take me to an estimated answer of 12. Now, our next step is to actually find the sum. 
So I'm going to rewrite my problem so it's easier to work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to write down 6 and 87 hundredths plus 5 and 18 hundredths. And I'm going to work to keep my decimal points aligned. That way I know I'm adding the right place values together. Now before I add those two numbers together, I'm going to go ahead and place my decimal point in my sum, my answer, as well. Once again, your decimal points should be aligned. Now we're going to start by adding the numbers in the hundredths place. So I'm going to add 7 plus 8 together, and I know that 7 plus 8 is going to give me 15. So I'm going to write a 5 down and I'm going to regroup the 1. Next, I'm going to add the numbers in the tenths place. Well, I know that 8 plus 1 is going to give me 9, plus that regrouped 1 is going to give me a 10. So I'm going to write down the 0, and I'm going to regroup the 1. Now we're going to add the numbers in the 1's place. I'm going to add 6 plus 5, which is 11, plus the regrouped 1, which is going to give me a 12. So what I know is, when I add 6 and 87 hundredths, plus 5 and 18 hundredths, the sum turns out to be 12 and 5 hundredths. And what I also notice is that sum is close to my estimated answer of 12. Now, let's take a look at question number 8. Our job here is to find the sum. So for number 8, they give us 16 and 18 hundredths plus 5 and 94 hundredths. Now, the first step I'm going to take is this. I'm going to rewrite those add-ins so that they're easier to work with. So I'm going to take my 16 and 18 hundredths and I'm going to rewrite that. And then to that I'm going to add my 5 and 94 hundredths. And what I've made sure to do is this. I have made sure to align my decimal points. That way I know I'm adding the right place values together. Now before I add those two decimal numbers together, the two add-ins together, I'm going to once again place my decimal in my answer. So here's my decimal, and once again, I've made sure to align those decimal points. Now we're going to start by adding the numbers in the hundredths together first. So I'm going to go ahead and add 8 plus 4, and I know that 8 plus 4 is going to give me a 12. So I'm going to write my 2 down, and then I'm going to regroup the 1. Now I'm going to add the numbers in the tenths place. So I'm going to add 1 plus 9, which is going to give me 10 plus the regrouped 1, which is going to give me 11. So I'm going to write the 1 down, and then I'm going to regroup 1. Now I'm going to focus on adding the numbers in the 1's place. So I'm going to add 6 plus 5, which is going to give me 11, plus the regrouped 1, which is going to give me a 12. So I'm going to write the 2 down, and I'm going to regroup the 1. And when I add those two 1's together, that's going to give me a 2. So when I add 6 and 18 hundredths plus 5 and 94 hundredths, my sum turns out to be 22 and 12 hundredths. Now, let's take a look at question number 10. Once again, our job is to find the sum. Well, for question 10, they give us 25 and 47 hundredths plus 7 and 24 hundredths. So once again, I'm going to start by rewriting this problem. So I'm going to take my 25 and 47 hundredths, and I'm going to write that decimal number down, the first add-end, and then to that I'm going to be adding my 7 and 24 hundredths. And I want to point out once again that I'm making sure to align my decimal points. Now, before I begin adding those numbers together, I'm going to go ahead and place my decimal point in my answer as well. So I'm going to go ahead and place that decimal point in my answer, once again, I'm working to make sure that those decimal points stay aligned. That way I know I'm adding the right place values together. Now, I'm going to start out by adding the numbers in the hundredths place together first. Well, I know that 7 plus 4 is going to give me 11, so I'm going to write down a 1, and then I'm going to regroup the 1. So here's the 1, and then I'm going to regroup. Now I'm going to add the numbers in the tenths place together. I know that 4 plus 2 is 6, plus that regrouped 1 is going to give me a 7. So I'm going to write my 7 down. Now I'm going to focus on adding my 1's together. Well, I know that 5 plus 7 is going to give me 12, so I'm going to write a 2 down, and I'm going to regroup the 1. 
Now I know that 2 plus that regrouped 1 is going to give me 3, so I'm going to write down a 3 in the tens place. So when I add 25 and 47 hundredths plus 7 and 24 hundredths, the sum turns out to be 32 and 71 hundredths. Now, let's take a look at question number 12. Our job is to find the sum. Well, for question 12, I'm going to add 19 and 7 tenths plus 5 and 46 hundredths. Now, my first step is going to be to rewrite this problem. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to write down my 19 and 7 tenths. And to that, I'm going to be adding 5 and 46 hundredths. Now, when I look at that problem, what I notice again is this. My 19 and 7 tenths stops at a number in the tenths place, and my 5 and 46 hundredths has a number in the hundredths place. So I'm going to make an equivalent decimal to make sure that I'm once again adding the right place values together. So I'm going to add a zero behind my 7, just making an equivalent decimal. And what I'm going to do now is this. I'm going to go ahead and begin adding those numbers together. Well, before I work the addition, once again, I'm going to drop that decimal point straight down because I want to make sure that my decimals are aligned. Now we're going to focus on the numbers in the hundredths place. Well, I know that when I add 0 plus 6, that's going to give me a 6. So I'm going to write down 6, and then I'm going to focus on the numbers in the tenths place. And I know that when I add 7 plus 4, that's going to give me 11. So I'm going to write down the 1, and I'm going to regroup 1. Now I'm going to focus on the numbers that are in the 1's place. I know that 9 plus 5 is 14, plus that regrouped 1 is going to give me 15. So I'm going to write the 5 down, and I'm going to regroup the 1. Now I know that the 1 plus the regrouped 1 is going to give me 2, so I'm going to write down a 2 in the 10's place. So I know that when I add 19 and 7 tenths, or 19 and 70 hundredths, plus 5 and 46 hundredths, my sum turns out to be 25 and 16 hundredths. Now, let's take a look at question number 13. It's one of our real-world problem-solving questions, and number 13 says, Marcellus dog gained 4 and 1 tenth kilograms in 2 months. Two months ago, the dog's mass was 5 and 6 tenths kilograms. What is the dog's current mass? Well, what I notice in this problem is this. I notice that, first of all, the dog gained 4 and 1 tenth kilograms. And if they've gained it, that means they've put that weight on. They've added to its original weight. Well, I also know that two months ago, the dog's mass was 5 and 6 tenths kilograms. And they want to know what the dog's current mass is. So in order to find the dog's current mass, I'm going to take my 5 and 6 tenths, and to that I'm going to add the 4 and 1 tenth pounds that were gained. Now, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that problem so it's a little easier to work with. So I'm going to rewrite it, and I have my 5 and 6 tenths, and I'm going to add to that my 4 and 1 tenth. And I'm making sure that my decimal points are aligned. Now, before I do any addition, I'm going to once again bring down my decimal point and my sum, or my answer. And once again, it's important to make sure that your decimal points are aligned so you're adding, adding the right place values together. So I'm now going to start out by adding the numbers in the tenths place. And I know that 6 plus 1 is going to give me 7, so I'm going to write down my 7 in my tenths place. Now I'm going to focus on adding the numbers in the ones place. And I know that 5 plus 4 is going to give me 9. So what I end up with is this. The dog's current mass turns out to be 9.7 kilograms. And we now have our answer to this question. Now, let's take a look at question number 14. It's another one of our real-world problem-solving questions. And number 14 says, During last week's storm, 2 and 15 hundredth inches of range fell on Monday and 1 and 68 hundredth inches of rain fell on Tuesday. What was the total amount of rainfall on both days? Well, what I know is this. On Monday, 2 and 15 hundredth inches of rain fell. And on Tuesday, 1 and 68 hundredths inches of rain fell. The question is, what is the total amount of rainfall? 
And when I see that word total, I know that I'm going to be adding those two amounts together. So I'm going to be adding 2 and 15 hundredths plus my 1 and 68 hundredths. Now I'm going to rewrite that problem so it's a little bit easier to work with. So I'm going to write down 2 and 15 hundredths plus my 1 and 68 hundredths. And I'm making sure once again that my decimal points are aligned. That way I know I'm adding the right place values together. Now before I work on adding those numbers together, I'm going to go ahead and write my decimal in my sum or my answer. And once again, I'm making sure that those decimal points are aligned. Now I'm going to start by adding the numbers in the hundredths place. And I know that 5 plus 8 is going to give me 13. So I'm going to write down a 3 and I'm going to regroup the 1. Now I'm going to add those numbers in the tenths place together. Well, I know that 6 plus 1 is 7, plus that regrouped 1 is going to give me 8. So I'm going to write down an 8 in the tenths place. Now I'm going to focus on adding the numbers in the ones place together. And I know that 2 plus 1 is going to give me 3. So what I know is the total amount of rainfall that fell on both days is 3 and 83 hundredths inches. Now, let's take a look at your homework questions for tonight. I would like you to complete question number one and question number two, as well as numbers three through six, found in your GoMath workbook on page 68. Don't forget, somewhere on your homework page, I want you to let me know, do you feel like you're number one a novice, number two an apprentice, number three a practitioner, or number four an expert? Don't forget, your homework assignment for tonight will be to complete number one and number two, as well as numbers three through six, found in your GoMath workbook on page 68. I hope you have a great evening, and we look forward to seeing you at school tomorrow.